Welcome to play. It's not just fun and games. Play should be the indoor cat's version of hunting. Cats are natural born hunters, and even indoor cats need these hunting opportunities. Yes, I know, you're already feeding your cat. So you may be thinking, well, why do I need to make her hunt for her food? Even though you may think that because you schedule feed your cat, or you leave out food for grazing, that your cat has no need to hunt for her food, she really still does need to have that hunting experience. Cats who do not use their minds and bodies together to successfully outwit and capture their prey can become fat, bored, stressed, and may eventually show behavior problems. Typically, these behavior problems are attacking and biting a person or another pet in the household, stalking and pouncing on a companion cat, or chewing on inappropriate objects like electrical cords. It seems obvious that play and exercise are important for cats. However, many cat owners don't make the time to play or they don't understand how they can use play to discover certain behaviors that they find unacceptable. In my work as a cat behaviorist, many people come to me and say their cat is aggressive or destructive. When I ask the cat owners what they are observing that leads them to describe a cat as aggressive, they may say their cat stalks them and ambushes their ankles as they walk by. The cat will pounce on and capture those ankles and then sink her teeth into that captured prey, also known as the ankles. Other people say that their cat goes after them with their claws and hangs on, leading to scratching. Another complaint is scratching a person's body part, like an arm or a leg. Clients have told me that their cat jumps up on the bed at night pawing their face for attention. And sometimes this may leave scratches. Or they may say that the cat is pouncing on items that are on shelves and the cat is trying to get them to move so that she can chase the items on the floor. Well, if a cat's only form of stimulation that ends with a successful capture is sinking her teeth into your ankles as you walk by or grabbing you with their claws or pouncing on the other cat in the household, or getting some excitement from your items falling off the shelf, then that is where she will turn to satisfy this natural need. So the big question you need to ask is, does this cat get daily stimulation in the form of a hunt and capture? I hear all day long from cat owners who say that their cats do not play. Some people equate the term play with something only young cats do, and then grow out of as they get older, like a child becoming an adult. A cat owner will say to me, my cat is nine years old, so her playing days are behind her. But if they were living outside, these cats would hunt and they would catch their prey in order to eat and stay alive. People say to me, my cat doesn't like toys. My cat is lazy. My cat is fat. My cat is not interested. So what's really going on if your cat isn't playing? Well, there could be several reasons. Let's work on figuring that out. Keeping in mind that cats have preferences just like us. Whatever activity or tool you have introduced to your cat simply may not interest your particular cat, but that does not mean that your cat doesn't want to play. It's possible that the play you are offering is not enough like real hunting. Do you play with your cat or do you just toss a toy on the floor and expect the cat to amuse herself? Take a look at playtime through your cat's eyes. Where are all those cute toys that you spend so much money on? Are they gathering dust in a big pile or are they just sitting in a toy basket in the corner? To your cat, they're nothing more than lifeless prey, offering no stimulation. We want to get into that hunting sequence because a play session that simulates a successful hunt has many advantages. It will strengthen your cat's bond with you, provide much needed stimulation, and reward your cat with the good feeling of being a successful hunter. Your cat will feel like a successful conqueror, ruler of the territory and confident. 
we want this for our cat. And our cat do recognize a play session that mimics a hunt. And on the other hand, they do learn to recognize play sessions that are pointless. And they will start participating in your play sessions if you were only providing the pointless ones. For play that simulates a hunt, you want a fishing pole or wand type toy. This allows you to manipulate the toy in a way that resembles prey and the prey's movements. So think about how prey would act. Real prey is unpredictable. So you want to mimic that to make the hunt enticing and interesting. Prey moves or runs at different speeds. Prey may quickly change direction to elude the predator, the cat. The prey wants to survive, so it may scoot under the couch or run behind a bureau. If the prey is slightly injured or cornered, the, the prey may play dead and then suddenly jump up to make a quick escape when the prey thinks it's safe and the cat isn't looking. The prey will be running away from the cat, not towards the cat. And it definitely will not fly into the cat's face and begin to shake itself madly to get the cat's attention. Cats have wonderful imaginations and they will use their imaginations in play sessions that are interesting and creative. Cats use their imagination to turn the toy into prey. Cats can pretend or make believe during play. They can imagine that one object, such as the toy at the end of the string, is actually a second type of object, such as prey. While playing, they are imagining that a toy that is really a lifeless object is actually alive. This requires mental complexity and keeps cats' minds sharp. Play is a way for cats to explore new possibilities and imaginary scenarios. Okay, so you know that big basket of toys you have that sits in a corner in the living room, and every once in a while you throw the toys on the floor, and your cat just looks at them and walks away. Well, solo toys do not act like prey. They sit on the floor motionless, forcing the cat to be both the predator and the prey. Not too realistic. So then, I'm gonna explain this to my clients and tell them that solo toys may not trigger the prey drive. I may often get the question that asks about motion detected toys. So people will say to me, well, what about solo toys that are battery operated or automatic or are motion detector based toys? They move on their own. So could these types of toys be used to mimic prey? Mimic prey? The problem is, these toys do not really act like prey either. Most follow a simple pattern when they move so that cats can quickly figure it out or they get bored and tired because there's no real interaction that simulates a hunt. Cat owners who stand there and sort of wave the toy around with no enticing patterns or opportunities for the cat to stalk, pounce and capture will also tell me that their cats don't play. But the real reason the cat isn't responding the cats need interactive play with toys that move in unpredictable and realistic ways. For a play session that meets a cat's needs in terms of it being realistic, you have to trigger your cat's prey drive. In addition, for prey sequence play, you've got to use a fishing pole or wand toy. Think about the steps in the hunting sequence. Oh, I know you've seen all kinds of cats hunting in countless wildlife documentaries, big or small, domesticated or wild. When cats hunt, they follow a precise sequence. It's this sequence that you're going to recreate for your cat so that you're using play in a realistic way. Not all toys allow you to manipulate them in a way where you can replicate the hunt. But a fishing pole, our wand toy can do exactly this, and it's with you at the helm. Think about what prey does before the hunt that would trigger that catch prey drive. Some fly, others scurry on the ground. They may climb the walls or run behind furniture or inside a bookcase and make a little noise. 
This is what's going to grab and hold your cat's attention. Use different styles of play and think as the prey would. Don't touch the cat with the toy as a way to trigger the cat's prey drive. Don't dangle the toy in your cat's face or move it too wildly about. These actions are not realistic. There is no prey that would go and place himself right in the cat's face. Prey moves away from the cat, not towards the cat. So always be thinking of mimicking a hunt. Once you get going, it is first a play session with movements that are fast and slow, up and down. Focus on being realistic. As you get deeper into your play session, switch things up. The prey is getting tired. Pretend it has been beaten up a bit by your cat. And as the cat pounces, swipes, or even gets in a bite that isn't enough to kill the prey yet, there are gonna be different movements. Maybe now it flops around a little more or plays dead and then suddenly wakes up and takes off. Maybe this is when the prey starts hiding. It's the prey's change of strategy and unpredictability that will keep your cat's prey drive triggered in full gear. Now, have fun. Sometimes after a long day, it can be kind of therapeutic to act like a bird or a snake or a mouse for 10 to 15 minutes. I'm giving you the perfect excuse to go ahead and do this and have a, have a lot of fun with your cat. The most important rule of the play session has to do with the cat successfully getting that prey. For this to be beneficial and fun, as well as realistic, your cat needs to have many captures during playtime. When you're playing with your cat, the point is not to find out how long you can keep that toy away from the cat. It is not about making the cat continue to run after the toy. It is not about tiring the cat out and going on and on for hours. And it's definitely not about yanking the toy away as soon as the cat gets close because you think it's good for the cat to have to keep running to get it. The truth is, it's about how rewarding the session is for the cat. I see so many people who move the toy close to the cat, and as soon as the cat is ready to pounce, they pull the toy away again. In a 15-minute play session, be sure your cat has maybe eight to 10 mini interim captures, simulating the prey getting injured, playing dead, or trying to get the cat off course. You always want to make sure your cat catches the prey many times during a play session. Two 15-minute sessions per day are recommended for your cat. Now, there's a reason that I specify to cat owners to conduct 15-minute sessions, because so many people think that the whole idea of play is to tire the cat out. People will say to me, well, I played with my cat for 45 minutes, and he still bit my ankles. So, the idea isn't to tire out your cat by having these long play sessions that resemble a triathlon. The idea is to simulate a hunt that ends with a successful capture that the cat can eat. A toy that can be bitten, torn, or ripped apart is most satisfying. It's that simple. To imitate a realistic hunt that is rewarding, the cat needs to have many captures within the session. Make sure she's able to bite down on the toy in her mouth or grab it in her paws. Sometimes people go overboard with making the game overly challenging, constantly keeping the toy out of the cat's reach. This ends up adding to the cat's stress, frustration, or tension. Don't make this an impossible challenge for your cat. Follow the cat's lead. Let your cat catch the prey and then make the prey struggle a bit. Pretend the prey has lost its stamina. As your cat begins to relax her grip because the prey has ceased to struggle, then you can take the wand and move it a little, pretending the prey is starting to struggle again to get away. Remember, the struggle of the prey will bring incredible satisfaction to your cat's hunter instincts and her need for the next capture if the prey was able to escape from your cat's grip. This is part of the hunt. 
always let the cat feel and enjoy her capture for a little bit by keeping the toy motionless. Then start back up again as the prey tries to escape. Although this seems like a small detail, this play technique makes a huge difference in the session being rewarding and satisfying for the cat. It's the captures that get all of those feel good endorphins flowing through your cat's brain. It's the captures that create pleasure, confidence, and the sense of harmony and well being. When it has been about 10 or 15 minutes, and you're at a good point for the session to come to an end. Don't just abruptly stop, put the fishing pole toy down and walk away. Uh-uh, we want to finish what we started in a way that takes us all the way through the hunting sequence. Slowly, slowly wind down the movements. Simulate the prey getting tired, the prey is getting injured, the prey is losing her stamina, and maybe the prey has been trapped by your cat. Remember, always keep in mind, we are simulating a hunt. Take a few minutes to wind down that play session so you don't leave your cat more revved up than when you started. When caught, the prey struggles a bit and then stops struggling. Think about the wounded prey. It will start to move more slowly. It may be still for long periods of time and then move just a little because it's injured or tired. It will be easier and easier for the cat to catch. As the toy gets slower and the prey dies, the cat will now relax and feel good knowing that she has accomplished this satisfying final capture. Finish the game with a treat that you know is one of your cat's favorites. Since play should replicate a hunt, it is instinctively rewarding for your cat to enjoy his killed prey after the capture. And this creates more positive associations. Cats expect a catch and kill during a hunt, and then they want to eat their prey. The food after play is important. So we put your cat into her natural hunt, eat. Ah, I'm content, I'm relaxed, I'm ready for a nap cycle. Most people don't end the play session with a final capture followed by food, but this will make a huge difference. Your cat will enjoy a feeling of success instead of wondering why all of her best hunting techniques continue to fail. Being a successful hunter feels very good to a cat. Be sure to end every play hunting session with a small treat or a portion of your cat's meal. For your cat, this is the official end of play, and it ends the session in a natural way. Your cat has a signal that now the session is done. The cat has stalked the prey, pounced on it, bitten it, killed it, and eaten it. And remember, the treat or the food substitutes it as the prey at the end. Now the cat is content and relaxed and will be ready for a well-earned nap. Regular play sessions with a fishing pole or wand toy will take bored, stressed cats and make them happy. Cats who have regular play sessions to simulate a hunt won't need to attack a human or a companion cat to satisfy this need to capture. This also stops behaviors that people call destructive, such as knocking items off shelves and chewing on inappropriate items. Be patient. If the cat isn't pouncing right away, many cat owners assume she's not interested in play and they give up and put the toy away. But maybe that cat was in the middle of sizing up the situation or was planning a hunting sequence. If you haven't given your cat realistic play sessions in the past, you may have taught your cat that she can't depend on you to stay with the play session. And now she's more likely to ignore you when you pull out the toy again. Realize that from your cat's point of view, capturing the prey depends on strategy and plotting the next move in order to be successful. Cats respond to a play session when you allow them time to think things through. They wanna think about this in their heads before making a move. 
give your give your cat time to think. Cats like to use their minds and their bodies together. And don't forget, cats go back and forth during the prey sequence. Just because your cat stops chasing and goes back to watching the wand toy doesn't mean she's done. She is just resetting back to the staring and plotting phase. Keep moving and she will jump back in. Another reason your cat isn't playing is he may equate the toy with dead prey. Be sure to rotate your toys so he isn't expected to keep killing the same prey over and over again. Your cat's prey drive will not be triggered by prey he has already killed. And when I say rotate, I mean put those toys that are not currently in use somewhere where the cat can't see them or smell them. Place them in a closet, a drawer, or a storage container. After you are done with a play session using a fishing pole toy, put that toy away. In addition to the danger of strings being chewed, these toys should be reserved for your interactive play sessions. So remember when you were a kid and you were always told to put away your toys? The same rule applies here. Take the time to figure out what type of hunter your cat is, as well as a style of play. Just like people, cats have preferences for the way they like to exercise, and they have their favorite gear. Golfers have specific golf balls that they prefer. Runners have their favorite sneakers. Baseball players want their bat and glove to be a certain way. Some people like exercise with quick movements and others prefer a gentle walk. Pay attention to which toy is a favorite to see how your cat likes to play. There are so many options. Some cats like a toy that flies through the air, jumping from chair to chair. Other cats enjoy something slithering along the floor. There are many choices. Toys that are light, feathery, small, furry, long and snaky, easy to carry in the mouth, easy to bat with paws, fun to chew, or combinations of the above. Keep in mind that you want to provide enticing movements for your cat, such as wiggling the toy on the ground, hiding and disappearing, and quick start stop motions. Some cats like prey that moves about in plain sight. Others like looking for the prey behind the furniture. Some cats like to roll over on their backs and bat at the toy. Find out what your cat likes to play with and what her style of play is. Don't be discouraged and don't give up if during the first few sessions your cat only looks at you with a confused look on her face or if she just sort of half-heartedly paws at the toy. You both may be a little rusty at this, and there may be a learning curve. Okay, so do you have a shy, withdrawn cat? Then start off with just moving a ribbon of fleas slowly back and forth. Even if the cat is only watching the toy with his eyes or moving his head back and forth to follow the ribbon of fleas, he is focusing on something other than his own fear, and that is positive. Even if the shy cat never attacks, the cat is actively watching, and that's a win, so don't give up. If the cat is hiding under the bed or a piece of furniture, you can slowly move the fleece ribbon along the periphery. Use slow and gentle movements. Instead of going off to hide after playtime, your shy cat may now choose to stay closer to you. As cats get older, Exercise and play becomes more important to preserving physical agility and mental alertness. Now, don't stand on ceremony and wait um, for an invitation from your senior cat. Senior cats do tend to be more laid back. Their senses aren't as sharp as they once were, neither are mine, and they may not start in on a play session on their own. So trigger your senior cat's prey drive by presenting new toys or by creating interest and curiosity in his territory. So for example, make interesting but non-threatening changes. Leave out a cardboard box, leave out some crumpled pieces of paper, leave out a paper bag. And when you see the cat going to investigate these items or exploring them, then you can start playing around these items with your senior cat. 
Move the fishing pole type toy slowly and keep it along the ground. Many senior cats prefer slower games. Your senior cat will be more interested and get greater satisfaction and enjoyment out of the play session if you move the toy across the floor rather than going up on things. Have the toy at the end of the string be soft so that he can easily wrestle with it. If your senior cat is arthritic and experiencing a decreased range of motion and maybe some stiffness, have the entire play session take place on the floor. Your cat may not be able to leap in the air to catch a toy anymore, but he can chase it if you drag it across the floor. Cats use their ears as communication, protection against predators, and prey detection. So toys that make sounds will provide great stimulation for your blind cat. Noisy toys that chirp or squeak work well and will get your blind cat up and moving. Smell is also a way to attract a blind cat. A perfect aroma for a blind cat is catnip. Many toys are available that include catnip. The best toys for blind cats stimulate multiple senses at the same time. Cat toys are so varied and advanced these days that there are plenty of options for blind cats. Really, as long as you're not relying on a toy solely for its visual colors, a blind cat can play with almost any type of fishing pole toy. Take things slow with a blind cat and let her play at her own pace. Blind cats are great at navigating the world around them and they can play and engage with you in interactive play just like any other cat. Before starting a play session with your blind cat, make sure you vocalize your presence in a soothing manner so she does not become startled. Living in a silent world can get boring and lonely, even with people or other pets at home. You can avoid a bored and frustrated deaf cat, again, by providing sufficient stimulation. Provide interactive toys that appeal to the deaf cat's other senses. You can trigger the interest using their sense of smell. And here again, catnip toys are great. Use visual toys as well, such as brightly colored feathers attached to strings or short poles for, for hunting and chasing play sessions. Now, before you begin that play session, do a firm stomp on the floor to use vibration to communicate your presence and cause them to look around for the source. Do you have a cat who enjoys small toys that move on the floor? Is she the type of a cat that goes after that ant in your home? Fishing pole toys with a small bug or tiny toy at the end would be a good choice for this cat. Does her prey drive get triggered by a toy that moves fast or runs to hiding places? Well, mice like to run and hide behind and under things. Running under a chair or a couch is exactly what a mouse would do. So this cat would enjoy a wand toy with a play mouse at the end, and it can use the wand to move the way a mouse would run. And make sure you're manipulating that wand toy so that you're pretending the mouse is running and hiding as prey. Does your cat get into hunter mode when you see slow movement? Some cats enjoy stalking, watching, and planning are part of the hunt. If you have a cat who is not moving, but is visually locked onto a toy, then this is a cat who would prefer a fishing pole toy with a fleece of ribbon at the end, like a snake. Snakes move slowly or move only slightly. Some cats enjoy hunting after prey that goes up off the floor. They like to look up. These cats would do great with a fishing pole toy that has feathers on it, and you can alternate going high and low like a bird. Birds fly around and land on chairs and tables. They stand still for long periods before taking flight to land someplace else. So manipulate the toy to satisfy your cat's play preference by pretending to be the type of prey your cat desires. The location for playtime depends on the personality of your cat and whether there are other people or cats or other pets in the household. If you have a cat who loves being the center of things, then play with her whenever your family is all together and wherever they spend the most time. For a shy cat, pick a quiet room away from the household activity. 
If you have a multi-cat household and one cat dominates the toy and group play, find a separate location to allow the intimidated cat to get individual playtime. The one thing you consistently always want to avoid is a laser pointer. I really wish pet supply stores did not sell laser pointers as toys. They were developed to be used for PowerPoint presentations in the office, and that is where they should stay. I advise you to toss that laser pointer completely. Laser pointers are actually the cause of so many behavior problems in cats. Your poor cat is on a futile chase, pointlessly trying to get that little red dot that cannot be captured. Certain of a short cat, your cat pounces, only to find there is nothing there. There's nothing between his paws. There's nothing between his teeth. It's really not a good thing to do to a cat. Laser pointers create frustration and anxiety in cats. And this is the exact opposite of what we wanna do when we have a play session with our cat. It can also create problems between companion cats. There's a laser pointer will cause the cat to go find a way to get that capture in other ways that may not be so acceptable to the companion cat. Some good examples of this are pouncing on the, pouncing on the other cat or ambushing the other cat in the litter box. Cats expect a catch and kill after play. Laser pointers cause confusion because you, your cat chases the dosh but can never catch the dosh. This causes constant frustration, and there is no way to explain what is really happening with this red dot to a cat. Laser pointers do not provide a physical and tangible catch after stimulation, and cats need this because they are natural born hunters. Now, even I realize that you can't always be playing with your cat 24 seven. So what to do about this? An excellent solution is puzzle feeders. Cats love puzzle feeders because they simulate a successful hunt, including being able to eat the prey. You don't need to be present for your cat to use a puzzle feeder. So this is a terrific option for when you're at work, either in the office or working remotely from home. You can set up some puzzle feeders for your cat to use during the day. Cats benefit from puzzle feeders because they'll play more during the day, and this breaks up their daytime sleeping. Puzzle feeders allow your cat to have that feeling of a capture, satisfying this instinctive need to hunt, and they will be able to have a successful catch and kill when the food drops out of the puzzle feeder. Cats are happier when they are busy and hunting, and puzzle feeders meet that need. The cat has to figure out how to move the puzzle feeder in a way that will dole out the food. Providing your cat with this type of environmental enrichment plays a huge role in preventing boredom, stress, and anxiety. When the cat does not have enough stimulating opportunities, they may just sit around, and this builds up tension and anxiety, and it also leads to boredom. Puzzle feeders can help cats stay active, both physically and mentally. Cats can use their brains in a way that focuses on outwitting the puzzle feeder by manipulating the toy in different ways to release the food. Then they're rewarded with food, which serves as a natural signal to the cat that he has successfully accomplished this task. And now we are at the natural end of the game. This feels very good to a cat. And again, this satisfies his natural hunting instincts. Many owners keep their cats indoors due to safety or health reasons. However, it is important to remember that indoor cats need enough stimulation and environmental enrichment to keep them mentally sharp and physically fit. Cats in the wild hunt 10 to 20 times a day, using mental and physical energy to stalk, pounce, and eat prey. So cat owners must understand that their indoor cat still needs this mental and physical stimulation. Stimulation is so important because it can lead to a decrease in stress, just as it does with us, as well as an increase in the cat's confidence. In particular, 
When cats are chasing, pouncing, and catching an object, they feel like successful hunters. Using a puzzle feeder can provide this enrichment into their daily lives. Think about the indoor domesticated lifestyle of a cat. We are serving beautifully prepared meals to our cats in a bowl, presenting them their food usually two times a day. And often we do this along with treats and grazing. This causes them to gain weight and become bored. Puzzle feeders provide the cat with a reward-based playtime, giving them something to do during the day instead of looking out the window or napping. This prevents boredom, reduces stress, and most importantly, it stops those unwanted behaviors that many indoor cats engage in, such as destroying sofas, destroying the carpets, and destroying the walls, as they try to replicate the feeling that they would get from living outside and hunting. So if you have a cat who's turning your couch into confetti, a puzzle feeder is a perfect way to solve that problem. Start off with thinking about the type of food that motivates your particular cat. Most puzzle feeders work fine with treats or dry food. However, there are some cats that only eat wet food. So in this case, I would recommend selecting a puzzle feeder that is easy to clean because the wet food will be a little messier. A lick mat or a slow feeder is a terrific alternative for cats who prefer or can only eat wet food. Also, think about the curiosity level and activity style of your cat. There are some cats, when presented with a closed door, will figure out how to open it, and they won't stop until they solve that problem, while others just aren't as interested. So some puzzle feeders are oddly shaped so that they move in unpredictable patterns and need to be positioned just right for the food to drop out. Others work by having the cat get the food out by using his paws. Some work by lining up movable pieces to the puzzle feeder in a particular way. If your cat mostly uses his paws when he plays, choose a puzzle feeder that allows him to poke his paws into the opening. For an older or timid cat, try a puzzle feeder that is more stationary or a less complicated puzzle feeder that keeps the cat's food in plain sight, making it an easier, but still a rewarding achievement. If you have a cat who loves to figure things out and is curious, he might need a more complex puzzle feeder that requires him to employ multiple methods and multiple manipulations to overcome some type of challenge or puzzle. Look for something that is durable and be sure there are not little pieces that can break off. Check the instructions for washing. Something that can be simply thrown into the dishwasher will make it easier for you to keep clean. For most cats, plastic puzzle feeders are just fine. But if you have a cat who plays roughly, rubber may be a better choice. Many cats actually enjoy variety, so you may want to try a few different types and rotate the puzzle feeders just as you would rotate the cat's toys. Now, I know a lot of people like um, to do do it yourself. We have, I always have a lot of DIYers in my audiences. So some examples of DIY puzzle feeders are putting treats in a tissue box, egg carton, or ice cube trays. You can really do a lot with toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls. The cardboard roll from the toilet paper or paper towel can be sealed up at one end and then place some dry food or treats in there for your cat to fish out with his paw. To make it easier for the cat, poke more holes into the roll. Now, maybe you've recently received a gift of pears or oranges. Fruit gifts usually come in a cardboard box with each piece of fruit in its own compartment. And so as a cat behaviorist, I see, ooh, there's a great toy in this. Just take off the lid, and sprinkle dry food or treats inside each compartment. Egg cartons can be repurposed with a treat or food in the cups. These are particularly good for cats who like to use their paws to get the food out. Even a plastic water bottle can become an interactive puzzle feeder toy. All it requires is a water bottle with some holes cut into it. Place food in the bottle 
and let your cat move it around to release the food. Eventually, you can decrease the size or decrease the number of holes to make it a bit more challenging. This will encourage your cat to use hunting, pouncing, and play skills. If the goal for your cat is exercise and weight loss, I recommend a puzzle feeder that is in the shape of a ball. This will provide a lot of opportunities for movement because the ball will roll easily when your cat touches it. Your cat will have to move and chase the ball in order to get to a piece of food. Also, an overweight, out of shape cat will benefit more from ground hunting. If your overweight cat has never used a puzzle feeder, opt for a simple design. Puzzle feeders can help slow your cat's eating down too. So if you have a chubby cat who inhales her food, she won't eat as much with a puzzle feeder. Using puzzle feeders for exercise and losing weight is effective because the cat is more active and the eating is connected to their instinctive need to hunt. Most puzzle feeders do require a certain degree of dexterity and nimble paws, which may not be good for an older or arthritic cat. In this case, opt for puzzle feeders that use the cat's mouth. Feeding games with small openings too small for paws can be filled with canned food or small treats and fulfill the cat's desire to figure out where to lick. I have not encountered cats that could not adapt to puzzle feeders. Whether it's senior cats, kittens, three-legged cats, blind cats, cats with other disabilities, cats with partial paralysis, I have been able to find a puzzle feeder that will work for almost every type of cat. Puzzle feeders can help maintain cognitive function in senior cats and can benefit arthritic cats by providing physical mobility, which works stiff muscles and joints. Puzzle feeders will keep your aging cat sharp. This is a great way to stimulate a cat's mind and body. Cats are intelligent creatures and giving them something to do makes them happy at any age. There is a caveat with puzzle feeders. They may not work for cats who are not food motivated. In this case, I recommend two things. First, rather than using treats in the puzzle feeder, you can feed your cat his regular meals via a puzzle feeder. Now he will associate the puzzle feeder with meal time and he will be hungry. Second, you can try catnip puzzles. Catnip puzzles are great for cats who aren't super motivated by food, but respond to catnip. Catnip can also be an enticement for a withdrawn or shy cat. Fill a sock with loose catnip or rub some on the puzzle feeder. When you're rotating toys, Rubbing a little catnip on the ones you reintroduce will increase their appeal. But only use catnip once or twice a week. And don't leave catnip filled toys around all the time because cats can become immune to the effects of catnip if exposed too often. The main consideration is to start off easy. If your cat has never used a puzzle feeder, Start off with one that is transparent and has many holes. This way the cat can see and smell the food so the cat won't be too frustrated trying to get it out. The puzzle feeder can be introduced when you know the cat is hungry. Motivation may be increased at first by using a novel food type in the puzzle, such as treats or a dental diet. As the cat becomes more adept at using the puzzle, the food can now be changed to their regular diet or a mix of their regular dry food and treats, whatever works best for you and your cat. For dry food or treat filled puzzle feeders, place the cat's regular familiar food on the floor and put it right next to and around the puzzle feeder and allow the cat to eat around the puzzle feeder. During this time, the cat may inadvertently move the puzzle feeder while eating, and this will help the cat make the association between moving the puzzle feeder and receiving the food. You can gently roll or nudge the puzzle feeder at first too to maintain the cat's interest. Some people like to use a puzzle feeder as the permanent feeding method for their cat. So if you want a puzzle feeder to be the way you're always feeding your cat, at the beginning, don't put your cat's entire daily amount of food in the puzzle feeder. Wait until your cat figures it out so she won't be hungry or stressed. 
give her, give her a chance to, you know, kind of understand the deal because we don't want her to be too frustrated. To entice your cat, you can sprinkle a little bit of dry food or treats around the puzzle feeder to get her to come closer and investigate. Some cats, particularly those that tend to be nervous, may prefer that the puzzle feeder be placed in a quiet area where she can explore it undisturbed. By easing your cat in with a simpler toy, you'll prevent her from getting frustrated and we don't want the cat to just give up right away. This will all be new to your cat. So, you know, with any cat toy, make sure the puzzle feeder is sturdy enough to withstand the investigating that a cat may do. Make sure it can handle pushing, pulling, biting, and pawing at it. We want this to be a positive experience so it's always best to kind of do it a little bit of a little bit at a time, allow her to get used to it, and then we can start using the puzzle feeder more frequently. Now, let's talk about how we can use interactive play as a behavior modification tool. We can use play to help with inappropriate behaviors, redirecting to positive behaviors, and creating positive associations. We can use play to stop your cat from waking you up in the middle of the night. One last interactive play session right before bed can do wonders for a cat who feels that need for a late night or wee hours of the morning activity. And then you'll be able to get an undisturbed night's sleep. So if your cat is alone and spends most of her day napping, at the end of the day when you come home, she is now going to wake up and be filled with energy. You're home, let's play. She wants some physical interaction and exciting, and exciting stimulation. On the other hand, you may want to relax, sit on the couch and wind down from your day. But now your cat is wide awake and wants to do something active with all of her pent up energy. When you think about it, you are on totally opposite schedules. Finally, after relaxing and eating, and eating dinner, you get into bed and you're ready for sleep. But if your cat has not had that play session, specifically one that ends with that all important capture and food, she continues to be wound up. Eventually, her pent up energy is going to burst through. She just can't hold it back any longer. And then you get woken up in the middle of the night or very early in the morning. You can solve this problem with behavior modification using interactive play to reset your cat's internal clock and shift her natural rhythms. Conduct a super duper play session right before bed and be sure to end with a wind down, final capture and food. Now you have tapped into your cat's natural hunt, eat, sleep cycle. And now your cat is ready to sleep too along with you. The closer to your bedtime that you can do this session, the better. Puzzle feeders can also be a part of the solution for cats who wake you up at 4 a.m. A cat's sleep cycle is shorter than a human's, so the interactive play session will help, but sometimes you need to do, we may need to do a little bit more. So in addition to the play session before bed, place a few puzzle feeders on the floor before bedtime and your cat will have something to do when she wakes up before you. You can also keep a few puzzle feeders on your night table to toss to the cat. We can use play to create positive associations with people. For example, let's say you want your cat to bond with another human in your life, whether this person is a spouse, partner, roommate, friend, or the new cat sitter. So to start, you will need to get on a good play schedule with your cat. Get into a routine as cats love predictability and routine. And this will help your cat feel safe and secure. Once this is going well, you have those interactive play sessions down and you're doing them regularly. Now you will do these sessions when the other person you want your cat to feel comfortable with is sitting in the same room. So you'll conduct a play session with the new person just sitting somewhere in the room. When this is going well, then you will do the sessions with the other person standing right next to you. When this is going well and the cat accepts this, then the other person will conduct the sessions 
and you will be the one standing right next to him. Eventually, the new person can initiate the game and your cat will begin to feel more comfortable and you can start off having the new person conduct the play session and you being the one sitting next to that targeted new person. Eventually, the other person will be able to conduct the sessions on his own. This is a wonderful way for your cat to bond with another person. And the best part is it's really fun to do. You'll be having fun, the cat will be having fun, the new person will be having fun. It's a win-win all the way around. Is your cat stressed with the arrival of a new baby? Well, now we can conduct interactive play sessions with that fishing pole or wand toy with your cat in the same room as the baby. This is a very effective way to build positive associations with the baby. Make sure your cat gets a regular schedule of interactive play as much in proximity to the baby as possible. Even though you may be exhausted, remember, you don't want to deprive your cat of his needs. View these sessions as special times between you and your cat. Rub some baby powder or baby oil on the polar wand so your cat becomes familiar with these new smells. You can bring your cat with you to play near the baby. Reward your cat with treats for getting the captures. Your cat will associate the baby with a positive experience. Remember that from the cat's point of view, this whole baby thing takes place without any warning. The cat didn't know this was coming. Yeah, you had plenty of time to prepare and you knew the baby was coming. But from the cat's perspective, in one day, her world was turned completely inside out. Many people incorrectly assume any negative behavior a cat displays towards the new baby is based on jealousy, but that's just not true. It's really confusion and stress. And it's very overwhelming with all of these new sounds and new smells and probably people are coming over. There's a lot of stress for the cat, but interactive play will help to alleviate this. If you move and your cat is stressed in her new home, interactive play can create positive associations and allow the cat to feel brave and in control of this new territory. As the cat starts to leave her safe room to investigate the main part of the home, use play with that fishing pole to distract her if she becomes nervous. The goal is to show the cat that good things happen in this new territory and interactive play can be used to create positive associations. Interactive play will make the exploration of this new home a positive and fun experience. It won't be scary, you can use play to make it fun and rewarding. Play increases confidence and decreases stress. So use this tool to your advantage. The cat will think, wow, this new territory is filled with great things. There's lots of stimulation. I have so many opportunities to hunt. I get to play, I get treats, I get time with my person. This new territory is the best. I love it here. Often, stress-related behaviors such as over-grooming can be eased by regular sessions of interactive play and by redirecting the cat using that fishing pole or wand toy. You can use the toy to distract the cat from the behavior she's engaging in and segue into a play session that ends with that satisfying final capture and food. Stress is a trigger for so many cats, so set aside time each day to play with your cat using that fishing pole or wand toy. Cats thrive on routine and predictability. So schedule regular play sessions for your cat and stick to it as closely as possible. This will help the cat feel more secure and reduce the amount of stress in her life. If you see your cat is about to start over grooming or is heading to a targeted object like a cord to chew, or any stress-related behavior. Just distract the cat with a toy and then go right into a play session. Depending on the reason for the cat not using the litter box, play can be used as part of the litter box behavior modification plan. Interactive play, as well as puzzle feeders, can be used as tools when there is litter box aversion 
by creating new positive experiences for the cat with her box. Play with your cat near her little box, near her little box, just in the vicinity, not, you know, not right next to the box, but in the area where the box is. And go through that hunting sequence so that the cat feels confident and successful. Many cats don't use the box because they feel vulnerable. So if the area where the box is becomes associated with confidence and success, that's going to really help. Also, leave puzzle features for her to find and enjoy in the general area leading to her box. The goal is to make sure that good things happen to your cat when she is near her litter box. If she wasn't using the box because something scared her, this will help. If the litter box problem is because she feels vulnerable, play will help her to feel brave. Each play session will release her feel-good pheromones while she's near that box. Confidence and feeling brave in relation to the location of the litter box are two important components for litter box compliance. What do you do if you have a multi-cat household and one of your cats is doing something she shouldn't be doing to a companion cat? The key is to distract, disrupt, and redirect that cat's behavior. If you notice or even think that your cat is going to chase, ambush, pounce on, or attack the other cat, distract that instigator with a toy that makes a noise or toss the toy in her direction. Not at her directly, just enough to distract her from what she was going to do. Resist the urge to yell because you don't want the instigator to associate the startling noise or toy with you. Next, once your cat has stopped plotting her attack on the other cat because the noise or the toy has triggered her interest in prey drive, you want to disrupt her current course of action. Even though the instigator may have been planning to attack her victim, a cat would much rather hunt the prey. Redirect her to the preferred positive activity of being a hunter by using a fishing pole or wand toy to guide her away from her victim and engage her in a short play session. Once she engages in the appropriate behavior of a hunter, you can reward her for that with the capture followed by a treat or food. The instigator has the opportunity to fill, fulfill his needs without taking it out on the other cat. Cats prefer the positive feeling of being a hunter over those negative feelings that cause aggression. Distraction and redirection training is a positive way to do behavior modification. Cats do not think in terms of right or wrong the way we do. Cats don't learn from punishment unless it is applied all the time. And trust me, you will not be around to catch your cat in the act 100% of the time. And your cat will just learn to do the behavior you, you don't want him to do when you're not around. But punishment only serves to damage the cat-human relationship. So you really don't want to use punishment with your cat. Cats do respond to positive behavior modification because the cat's not trying to be bad. He's responding to some sort of stress or problem. He's trying to solve his problem with his cat tools. When one cat goes after another cat in the household, it is usually because there is some sort of stress or problem in that cat's life. Distracting, disrupting, and redirecting stops that negative behavior and gives your cat a reason to stop acting aggressively with a companion cat because now he's getting playtime, a hunt, and positive attention from you, and he's getting rewarding captures with treats. Positive behavior modification will improve the bond between you and your cat. And at the same time, teaches your cat that alternative behaviors can be equally or even more appealing. Distraction and redirection is effective because it is part of your cat's instinct. A cat in the wild will hunt down a prey animal and kill it. But if another prey animal catches that cat's attention before she eats it, the cat will go after the new, the new prey and abandon the first. Cats are instinctively driven to stare, stalk, chase, pounce and capture, and then bite to kill. So not only is distraction and redirection 
a positive way to do behavior modification, but, but we are working with rather than against the cat's natural instinct. Interactive play can be used for cats who bite, scratch, ambush, attack, and pounce. Whether it is a human or another cat or another pet in the household, you can distract the cat from doing the behavior you do not want and redirect to the positive behavior of being a hunter through an interactive play session. The cat can bite, scratch, ambush, attack, and pounce the toy instead of you or the other household pet. Being a successful hunter feels very good to a cat and really is going to be a much more positive alternative than going after you or another cat or pet to fulfill that need. They would rather hunt than deal with these aggressive behaviors in a negative way. You can also try easing tension between companion cats by having each one play with her own fishing pole toy. You can have a toy in each hand or grab another member of the household or a friend who the cat knows. This way, they're in the room together without having to fight over one toy. No one gets intimidated and one cat can't take over because there are two toys. You can also use a fishing pole toy with one cat and something that makes a noise with the other cat. A crinkly mylar ball or those soft balls that make a sound when shaken or moved are two options that I find work really well. Keep the cats a safe distance apart so no one gets a paw in the face. By using two toys, you reduce the chance of a fight. You also create positive associations between the cats. This method also helps the cat who is the victim or is more submissive to stay in the play session. If one cat constantly backs away, you may need to add more individual playtime for her to build her confidence. Each cat needs to feel secure and safe so she can focus on enjoying the play session. You never know, one day you may find the cats beginning to play cooperatively and they may, they may even get to the point of being, will, being willing to share a toy. We have gone through many reasons why you should set aside time to play with your cat. But I'd like to end with the last very important reason why playtime is essential for cats. Play is a part of a cat's biology. Without the proper mental and physical enrichment through interactive play, a cat will develop and display maladaptive behaviors and coping mechanisms, and this can be a problem for both the human and the cat. So play is not just fun and games. Play is an important tool in mitigating threats to cat welfare, such as reducing problem behaviors and improving human-cat relationships. Play is an accessible approach for improving domestic cat welfare.